guys what's up and welcome back to my channel my name is austin betha i'm really glad to have you here please do hit the subscribe button before you leave and also give this video a very big thumbs up at the end if you enjoy watching it okay on today's episode of the big brother Niger reunion it was all about venita and kimopra and how the guys in the house fought to have them by their sides okay and you guys already know who these guys are they included omar shola fraud and jeff so before we get into kimopra's situation and all of that yeah let's talk about venita guys how many of you remember how excited omar shola was when venita stepped into the house like my god i was like omar shola comport yourself okay comport yourself you haven't even said hi to the lady the guy was love struck in fact let me use elusonam's words Omar Shola was smitten. In fact, Omar Shola was smote. And I agree. Like, when he saw Venita, he was just like... Like, he never seen woman before. I'm like, guy, calm down. I understand. I understand. Everybody you liked in the house liked somebody else. So, Venita was obviously God sent. For him, he felt like Venita was an angel sent from heaven to specifically meet his needs, you know? And he was really excited about it. Like, he did not hide the excitement. He was going up and down, you know, just showing his excitement. It was almost very annoying. I mean, if I was Benita, I would just be like, what the hell? What is wrong with this guy? Like, you don't even know me. What is your problem? But he was so excited. When he not even found out again that Venita was from Worry. Ah, I lost my brain. The guy just lost his own training. Like, you're from Worry. You're Venita. You're pretty. I mean, I mean, what else could he be looking for? And in his mind, yeah, he just felt like, God purposely allowed these other ladies to say no to him so that when Venita comes there, she will just fill in that gap that has been in his heart. But things did not exactly work out that way for him because, again, Uncle Frog was right by the corner, also saying some things into Venita's ears, and that was actually where the problem started from, okay? Now, Emuka had asked Diane if she agreed that both Omar Shola and Frog really liked Venita when she came into the house, and she was like, Well, to be honest, Omar Shola was excited to see Venita. Like, he was overly excited. He couldn't even hide it. She also mentioned that Fraud also liked Venita. But she mentioned that the reason Venita kind of stepped away from Fraud was because of something Fraud had done. Now, Ebka was like, can you just tell us this thing that Fraud did that made Venita step back? And she was like, well, there was a time Venita came to complain to her that she doesn't really understand what's up with Fraud. You know, that Fraud was upset with her for coming to bed late. Now, let me explain what she meant by that. Yeah, like, during that period, Fraud and Venita were sleeping on the same bed. Because, again, Venita also clicked with fraud i mean they were really cool they laughed a lot they played a lot so at that time she was sharing the same bed with fraud and bear in mind fraud was the head of house at the time you know so she was always in the head of house room with fraud and all of that but she complained to diane that she didn't understand why fraud was upset with her for coming to the bed late you know she was out with the other housemates chatting and just gisting with them and then when she wanted to sleep she now went into the hoh room and fraud was like why are you coming in by this time and that kind of got to venita like wait i don't understand we're not even married yet you never pay my bride price you don't already they vex say okay i'm well, not come sleep by this so 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 time and all of that so that didn't make sense to her and that was why she actually withdrew from fraud now for Omar Shola, he actually referred to fraud as a snitch and his reason is this when Venita came into the house everybody knew that he was excited the housemates knew that he was really excited even with the viewers to tell that Omar Shola was about to lose his home training just seeing Venita alone without even talking to her you know so it wasn't something that he was hiding it was obvious and fraud was also aware of this fact now Omar Shola did not just leave it at that he actually went up to fraud because he saw that fraud and Venita were getting close you know he went to fraud and was like guy see i like this babe okay just leave this babe for me i feel like this babe was just sent to this house because of me i feel like big just say men just pity me bring this babe he actually had a heart to heart talk with fraud about venita and fraud was like okay no wahala so in omar shola's mind now he felt like okay fraud understood him and fraud was going to give him space you know so that he could talk to venita and probably make his intentions known but the reverse was the case because fraud kept on coming body to venita you know he almost felt like fraud was using his position as head of house to just get to venita he felt like he was bullying the rest of the other housemates just to be with her and Omar Shola was not going to have that like again why would you do something like this I have just told you that see guy I like this babe and you still feel like it's okay to spend so much time with her Omar Shola talks say they see when we pay and pass they say he don't cook for Venita like this guy actually took out time you know went to the kitchen and prepared yam and the girls were like wait did you make fried yam or burnt fried yam but to me that's not even the point the fact that he actually made an attempt to make something for her is what matters and I feel like if she wasn't spending a lot of time with fraud she would have probably noticed all of these gestures here and there from Omar Shola. But then she was really crowded by Fraud's presence. So she did not really pay a lot of attention to Omar Shola in 
her words, she noticed that Omashola was excited to see her, but she did not really know that it was that serious up until she came out of the house. She also mentioned that if she had known that Omashola was that serious, you know, if she had known that he really felt that way about her, maybe she should have made her judgment without being in a rush and all of that. Because again, she also mentioned that she was really quick to write the guy off and all of that stuff. But oh well, that's not the point right now. The point is, Omashola was really upset with fraud. Like, why would you do something like that after I had the conversation with you? But for fraud, I was like, look, I don't understand why Omashola would come to me and be like, I beg, leave this babe for me. I like her. To him, it didn't make a lot of sense considering the fact that Omashola always boasted about the kind of girls he had outside, you know, how hot they were, how fine they were, and you know, the class of girls that actually flock around him and all of that stuff. So it did not make sense to him that Omashola would still want him to leave Venita. Like, why would you want to have all the hot girls to yourself? Anyways, Omashola's own problem was that, look, I made the effort, I cooked for this girl, and I came to where Fraud and Venita were standing. I was cutting eye for Fraud. Fraud, leave this girl. And I was like, wait, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. From one minute, one minute, on to almost two hours, Fraud was still with Venita. In fact, Fraud had gone ahead again to now make noodles for Venita, gave her noodles, sat with her, started gisting. And that did not make sense to Omashola because he felt like Fraud was doing that on purpose. And it was really late, you know, Biggie had turned off the light. So he just went to bed like, okay, guy, lock up. Fraud don't color be this one again, so there's really nothing you can do. But he was really pained and he was looking for a way to pay Fraud back. And guys, guess what? He actually got the golden ticket to actually spite Fraud back. Now, let me tell you guys what Omashola eventually did to get back at Fraud. Now, they had the drama task Biggie had given to them. Omashola and Esther were in the same group and they had a scene where Omashola was supposed to kiss Esther. Now the type of kiss that was required for this scene I'm talking about was just jam mouth come out like just pyam pyam you don't do the kiss finish. But Omashola was like lie lie today I must treat fraud fuck up she been to say now only as I be do. So rather than just give Esther the kiss of just come on mouth he decided to give Esther French kiss. In fact when he was describing the kiss in the studio today he was like oh mommy said I bring out my mouth bring out my toe I don't they kiss Esther because I know say that thing will pay fraud. And the funny part was that immediately he finished kissing Esther he just looked at fraud and guys the expression of fraud's face the expression on Fraud's face was priceless and that was exactly what Omashola wanted to achieve so he was really happy that yes I finally did something that paid him because you guys know how Fraud and Esther were in the house because at that time they were still together even though things were not 100% with them and all of that but at least there was something between them so Fraud's expression was like yes Omashola you got it right this time and it was really really funny because even when they were talking about it today Fraud could never say it because he knew that oh okay so you actually did this thing on purpose he was just there looking at Omashola like Wow. Wow. Now, I got on to Fraud, I was like, Fraud, what's up? Do you think you actually broke the guy code? I mean, Omashola walked up to you and he expressed himself to you. You knew his intentions towards Venita, yet you decided to go for her. So, do you think that you actually broke the code or, you know, what are you going to say about this whole thing? And in Fraud's words, yeah, he said, Venita is my perfect spec and me and her shared a lot of common ground. And my mind, I'm like, now everybody this Fraud, they just get common ground with you. You not carry this your common ground and go and lock it up in the common room because I don't understand. According to Fraud, yeah, he said he was really happy with Venita. You know, Venita made him happy and seeing that things were already over between him and Esther it was just really easy for him to spend more time with Venita and all of that stuff at this point here yeah, there was already an existing theory that okay Esther is already becoming upset she's already becoming jealous that fraud is with Venita and she was constantly looking for ways to get back to fraud and fraud was not giving her that chance because you know, I remember that time it was almost like the thing they pain Esther so they, she called a meet fraud she was trying to have conversations with fraud but fraud was not paying attention to her and let me tell you I was really excited about what fraud was doing like I just really liked the fact that he wasn't paying attention to Esther because again you cannot just be playing with people's emotions like that you don't want him allow him go and meet another person even though I wasn't happy that he was dragging Venita with Omashola I was happy that he was doing something to get away from Esther because Esther was really toxic in that house she was always shouting always complaining always making it look as if everything is about her making it look as if the whole biggest house was revolving around her and I just did not understand why and Venita actually noticed this whole thing about Esther trying to get back to fraud because fraud was with her you know she actually had this conversation with fraud like fraud what's up what's going on between you and esther because the way she treats me is almost like she's angry that i'm with you and almost immediately ebuka asked fraud the question that broke tables tonight it was like fraud do you think that being with venita was better than being with esther and fraud was like yes being with venita was better than being with esther because venita from the beginning from the onset was honest about her feelings but esther wasn't and i agree with him because again we didn't really know what esther wanted and all this how oh i like fraud in the house and i like him more outside the house doesn't just make sense to me because again i never even saw her as someone who liked fraud from the onset so saying that you liked him during the show and outside was just really off for me okay anyways then we can now talk to venita i was like venita what's up with you and fraud like what was going on between you people during the show and all of that stuff and right now are you guys still together do you still feel the same way about him and she was like well during the show i actually had a very soft spot for fraud but then i also felt like fraud was the one leading me on but then again asking me if i still feel 
the same way about fraud right now the answer to that would be no for two reasons and then because I was like okay can you tell us what these reasons are and she's like number one I don't think I can trust him as much as I did during the show because coming out a lot of things happened a lot of things changed and number two being with fraud during the show also cost me a very serious situation outside the house she did not really buttress on that but then for these two reasons she actually mentioned that she cannot be with fraud anymore but she still maintained the fact that she has a soft spot for fraud and you know they are still like very good friends and all of that stuff but being in a relationship with him that's not something she actually sees happening now after that conversation yeah it was time for us to now talk about kim opera jeff and omar shola and the first clip that was played to us was when kim was in the diary session with biggie and you know biggie asked her if she had noticed any interest from any of the guys and she said yes then biggie was like okay can you tell me who these people are and she was like jeff and omar shola after that they played another clip for us where jeff was in the hoh room with kim opera and kim opera was really trying her best to friend zone jeff and jeff was like no 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 don't do that to me don't put me in the friend zone don't put me in the friend zone you know he was trying to talk to her on the bed and everything and she was just there like look i see you as a brother like a big brother i was like no don't see me as your big brother please now you can ask him fine you admitted that both omashola and jeff liked you now did you choose jeff over omashola because omashola was bet niger coin broke and everybody just burst into love like uh uh what do you mean by because omashola was bet niger broke and for kim it wasn't really about omashola being broke and all of that stuff it was just a question of her wanting to be in the head of house room according to her she didn't really like the idea of you know sharing toilets sharing bathroom sharing things with the rest of the housemates so she just wanted to form an alliance with whoever it was that was head of house she even mentioned that she did not even vote for jeff you guys remember that jeff was the first head of house that was appointed during the show but she did not vote jeff she actually voted mike you know but she was like well since he's in the head of house room let me just go and tell him what i want because again according to her she's a goal getter whatever she wants she goes for it and she just asks you know rather than just beating around the bush she had gone to jeff and made her intentions known that she really wanted to stay in the head of house room so he should please choose her if he wants to choose a partner and all of that now for jeff he chose kim to be his partner because he really liked her but for kim she just really wanted to get away from the sharing of toilets and all of that stuff because again it almost seemed like maybe jeff was no longer the head of house maybe jeff was no longer the veto power holder she just shanked the guy and moved on now the question was kim what happened why did you just use jeff and dump him like that and she's like no i did not just use jeff and dump him i just noticed that he wasn't strong enough for me to form an alliance i need the person to be strong and i noticed that jeff was lacking during the arena game so it was just normal for me to leave him because i didn't feel like he was strong enough she also pointed out that jeff did not outrightly come to her and say oh look i like you i want to be with you as much as she knew she could feel it that he liked her but he never for one just came up and said oh i want to be with you you know he was always going to tell the other housemates oh this came girl this came girl i like this came girl but he never came to her and so it was really difficult for her to now say okay yes i want to be with you or no i don't want to be with you everyone now said okay fine now that you have defended yourself with jeff what about omashola what happened between the both of you and she was like just like venita said yeah she knew that omashola liked her she knew that he was excited to see her but then he just came and said i like you and he left like he didn't make any extra effort to be with her so it was really difficult for her to now say okay yes i want to be with you too now the question now went to omashola omashola what's up was that what happened you just go and say oh i like you and then you left and omashola was like no that was not what happened that the thing is he noticed that she was with jeff and then he also noticed that as soon as jeff was no longer head of house she dumped him so that kind of gave him a bad signal like wait what's up is she just using people and dumping them because of their powers and because of their positions and this was exactly the same thing the other housemates felt they felt like kim was just trying to be with whoever it was that had power anyways it wasn't really a conversation where they were dragging and being angry it was just a conversation where they were laughing and chatting and all of that stuff i feel like kim and omashola are in a good place now as much as they had their differences during the show and all of that i'm sure that they've had something outside of the house and i feel like if they really want to be with one another they can build up of it now i read a lot of comments from you guys yesterday saying oh yes kim opera and omashola are actually good together but that omashola needs to be ready to deal with a lot you know that she has a lot of excesses she's this she's that guys the truth is we all have excesses okay it's just a matter of finding a balance you know being with someone who can deal with your excesses and someone you can also deal with your excesses because again it's a vice versa thing so in my opinion it's all about you finding common grounds now let's borrow frauds english okay we just need to find common grounds find something that binds us together and just make it work all right thank you guys so much for watching today's episode if you enjoyed watching it please don't forget to give me a very big thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and i will definitely see you guys on the next one okay bye